Now, it's often claimed in this country that one reason why children of African and Caribbean origin don't do as well as we'd like in school, we've just been talking about it, is because they're surrounded by negative images, both in their communities and in the media. When artists challenge this, they usually do so through literature or music. But our final guest is booking that trend through animation. Fino. 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 Fino and Fino. How are you today? Do you want to help us count from 1 to 10 in Yoruba? Yes? Good. Any. Eji. Eta. You wouldn't like that, would you? No. Good. Well, that's what happened to our country and many others in Africa a long time ago. Time for my mama, mama special soon. Don't forget to wash your hands. What a special time it is for Africa. Now, why wasn't it like that when I was growing up? All I had with Tom and Jerry. Adamu, well done. Thank you very much for joining us. So tell us about the origin of Bino and Fina. I love the names, first of all. Uh, thanks. Um, the origins, basically, it was something I had in my mind for years. Yeah. I just thought, how come we don't have any decent um, African-made cartoons for children? Yeah. Not just for black children, African children, just for children generally. Yes. And it started from that, from that starting point, basically, went from there. Okay, yeah. and then what, you know, what was the process you had to go through before you kind of came up with this creation and actually brought it to screen? Uh, okay, it's it's pretty tough. Yeah. Um, I set up a studio, I'm Nigerian, yeah. so I set up a studio in Abuja. And, and the, the agenda was what? To create characters who were wholesome and who could imbue ideas, uh, positive ideas for the children to reflect something about themselves? Pretty much. I mean, it's quite simple actually. Mm. I wanted to have a very simple, educational, modern urban African cartoon for yeah. kids all over the world to watch. That's basically it. I didn't want anything that was like, is it, when Disney does something about Africa, you get like, you know, singing animals, you get mm -hmm. safari, yeah. you don't see any and buildings. Yeah, stuff, you don't yeah. see any buildings, you don't see any people in a house, you don't yeah. see people living a, 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 like a normal urban life, like in Lagos, Abuja, uh, yeah. a, a car, wherever, uh, wherever in, in, in Africa you are. So, yeah, yeah. that's the idea. Wonderful. I, I can see you nodding, Catherine. This is because, what, start them younger, you're thinking, or what? Yeah, well, yeah. I think it's great. I mean, clearly, I do think schools are failing black children, but also the, the media that's out yeah. there the street culture, all of that, and it's wonderful, the idea that um, black children see themselves in a yeah, cartoon. Yeah. I think that's important. I think, for instance, having Obama in the United States as the president, I think yeah. that makes a big difference for children when they grow up and see that. But that's not the reason why you went into the business of animation in the first place, oh, no. is it? No, I just like drawing comics. <laughs> You've been that way the whole time? I've been that way since I was a kid. Yeah, if you well, ask my mom, yeah, she, she, yeah. I have like tons of sketches and stuff. I've always done that. Then I went into architecture because... That was kind of the closest thing I could do that was artistic that I could think I could do in Nigeria because you tell your parents you're going to be a cartoonist. They're like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, my, my father used to say, my younger brother said he wanted to go into it. Art! What is art? <laughs> AT, art instead of exactly. art. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I did that, did the architecture thing, but I still kept my eye on what was going on in the animation field. Right. Went back, taught myself, did a master's, and went back into the field again, That's doing commercials and stuff like that. I must that. have been burning inside you for you oh, to yeah, maintain yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, Focus. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Good yeah. for you, man. You know, it's not just brain drain, it's brain gain as well. Yeah, yeah. Adamu, thank yeah. you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you very much. And that's it for our Shoot the Messenger this week. Many thanks to our guests, Regina Melanda, Peter Moore, Catherine Burbal Singh, and Adamu Waziri. Okay, that was the interview. Um, I hope it gave you an idea about what the Bino Fino project is all about. We try to add more flavor to this. It's about creating more African educational content for kids around the world to watch. Now, where are we? We already have a TV feature, which as you've seen has been shown around the world. Um, thanks to Bino Fino fans out there. We launched this back in 2010, and thanks to you guys out there, we've got it featured on so many different platforms, and we could have done it without your help. But you've now asked us to take things to the next level. For that to happen, we want to now produce 26 brand new episodes. And that is going to take a bit of time, and that's going to take a bit of fun. Today. And that's why we're here. We're asking you to help us in that journey. Help us create the content that you want to watch. And to be able to do that, all you have to do is just, if you can't contribute financially, um, spread the word. Tell people. Whatever you need to do. If you own a blog, if you run a blog, a website, Facebook page, group, um, 
TV station, newspaper, if you own one, if you own radio, um, if you know anyone famous, whatever, um, tell them about Vino Vino. So help us create a little bit of African broadcasting history, in fact, world broadcasting history, by producing more content for kids to watch, made in Africa, by Africans, instead of Africa.